sabona se sentseng ha ipelo njani ha ipelo njani thank you so much for joining us today on the panel show thank you very much for having me uh i've been wanting to get you on here for so long uh <laughs> ever since you blocked me on twitter <laughs> um the beauty of it is we met officially at a mutual friend's house usia you guys are recording an episode there um i didn't know you um besides your online persona mm. and i realized very quickly that you are not what we think you are uh and i think since then we've spent some time together um which has been very pleasant for me i hope it's been pleasant for you well it's had its moments oh. <laughs> um no i have no you're a lovely young man so i've had a really you. good time emphasis on the young si fresh penalty <laughs> I always have to remind people that I am a grown woman because of my young spirit. So, I'm always going to pull the age card. You have a young spirit, but I I think it's also kudos to how you look because you look young as well. Thank you. Which a lot of women <laughs> would kill for. So, thank you. Thank you. So, you blocked me on Twitter as you've probably blocked a whole lot of other people. I wonder and, what um, you said. Were you rude? I probably wasn't. I was probably being polite and No, sometimes the only time I really block people is when people come at me with a funny energy. Yeah. So I'm okay with disagreeing because I know that we live in a, a, a weird and wonderful world where yeah. different views. But I also know since I've met you, I know that me and you are very different. Sure. Our opinions are completely different. Um but it doesn't mean that there's no love, but we're very different. So it is possible that we clashed just as spirits and sure. not because there is hate or whatever but i know that when i block people it's because i'm like i don't like the lack of respect yeah. element that's coming with this tweet because asazani asizontanga and you're being too comfortable they come at you sideways yeah so i'm just like no you're not my age i can't even ask you to add me back because i've been permanently removed <laughs> of twitter i think it's, it's good, for society, well, it's good for society that i'm good for society some of your views and thoughts i'm just like whoa Are so amazing We're just like, oh my god, guys, when you're starting again. Okay. <laughs> you're big on energy. I'm very big on um, energy. What does energy mean to you? What are your beliefs? Cuz I like I said, I think a lot of people have assumptions, but they may not really know. You know, as you know, in the world there's duality. So good and bad coexist. It's just yin and yang. Yin and yang, good people, bad people. So some of us human beings, because you know people are gifted in different ways and it's an array from left to right. And mm. some people are gifted physically, some people are gifted, like they can use their bodies in amazing and talented ways. Some people are gifted mentally, their mm. minds operate in incredible ways. Some people are gifted spiritually where their spirits pick pick up extra vibrations in the space. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of my tweets, a lot of my shaking up the country is from a spiritual dynamic. Mm. So I am very I mean it comes across as very moody to somebody who's watching me from outside. Yeah. But when I move into a space, I feel everything that's in there and if I don't like something, it's going to show. You're an empath. I I suppose that's what white people call it, ne? That is what white people call it. Yeah. Um but it doesn't even just have to be people, just mm. in a space. Sure. Even if the space is empty, I can come in there and be like, "Oh, some weird stuff happened here." Mm. And then later on somebody will be like, "Oh yeah, somebody died in there or something like this happened." But you know, you pick up energy. Sure. So what, what, what are what are your beliefs? Are you religious? Are you do you practice I, African um, spirituality? You know, you can't practice African spirituality because unlike religion, African spirituality is not like a system. It's okay. a way of life. So it's like do you believe in nature? Um so do I believe that the different phases of the moon affect my, my body and mm. my psyche differently? Yes. Mm. Do I believe that some herbs there are herbs and plants in this world that feed my body and give it different vitamin Cs and Bs? Yes. Do I believe mm. that the sun has got um elements in it that feed me as a human being? 
So African spirituality is just based on nature and how human beings relate to nature. That's why I'm saying that it's not something you can really believe in because mm. it's not that you believe in the air that you breathe. You don't have to think about it. It's just the way it is. You don't have to believe that water is cleansing. Yeah. Or that's but now <laughs> it's does, showing itself, you know? Does this mean religion goes against African spirituality? Or I guess what you'd call nature. Like by definition, if you are going into a system, mm. it means you're countering your natural disposition. It does. And we must remember that religion has always been used politically yeah. to control people and to get people to do according to what the law is saying and what everybody's saying. Yeah. So the beauty about African spirituality, it's the beauty to be yourself. Mm. What have you been naturally created to be and how do you because the concept of god ne, mm. in religion is placed outside of you of course whereas spiritually we are all god mm. so how do you how do i connect to my inner god what makes me feel good mm. that's what i like about african spirituality is that it's about what feels right you know and what feels nice so whenever you are doing an activity and you're like really enjoying it. That's yeah. your spirit saying, yes, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. So we're not supposed to suffer. We're not supposed to be sad and stuff. Mm. That's the human soul saying, no, you're going the wrong direction. So your, your spirit literally guides you on your journey to be like, am I going the wrong? Once you feel suffering, it's, you're going the wrong way. But how do people pick that up? Because so many people every day, even on social media venting, the jobs they're in, the relationships they're in, they're miserable, which to what you're saying, think, mm -hmm. that's the thermometer saying you're in the wrong space, mm -hmm. living the wrong way. How do people a conflict between realize you? that and then shift? The thing is a lot of people I feel like are lazy to do the inner work. Yeah. People are scared of being alone and a lot of the inner work is done by being by yourself. Yeah. So once people get past that threshold everyone's always replacing relationships as soon as the breaks one breaks up this one you already moved mm. on to the next you know so people i feel like they don't take time to learn themselves yeah and to learn what makes them feel nice to learn what they actually don't want to tolerate people just go with it they just go with it and they like vibe and they at the parties and if they don't do the inside work of mm. what do i actually want is, is this where let's say part of your work becomes meeting people hearing them say what they say and saying i can guide you to find that strength to be alone to find yourself because clearly you're scared but i believe part of my purpose is to tell you don't worry it's mm. okay such a beautiful and gentle way to put it but that is exactly what i am oh. <laughs> um which is why i think a lot of people react violently to me because i'm a medicine and medicine mm. is bitter i make people confront things that they don't want to confront things that they've put under the the carpet that they've been fine just tiptoeing around the elephant and i'm like guys there's a pink elephant in a tutu in the middle of the room what are we going to do about it mm. and everybody's like how dare you <laughs> you know and i'm just like no but the elephant is there so what are we going to do about it mm. so i think that's what the conflict is between me and my society but it's an okay conflict to have because in the long run we are self-correcting and we are growing. We are evolving. I mean, isn't that the human journey to get better as human beings? I once spoke to Joshua Maponga. I don't know if you know him. He's going through a journey of leaving yes, religion yes, and Christianity and that, finding that, that self. Episode. I am uh, one of your fans. Thank you so much. Yes, I did watch that episode. Yes. Um, one of the conversations I've had with him privately was him speaking about, I think, the seventh revolution because we're going through these industrial mm -hmm. revolutions mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. technology. And he says, ultimately, I think at the seventh level, we correct, we go back to nature because he believes, and there's an amazing Darren Aronofsky movie called Mother with Jennifer Lawrence and Javier Bardem, I think, which speaks about the fact that mother nature will always overpower, mm -hmm. I guess, ego and whatever. Mm -hmm. And she will. You believe in that. You believe the world will always, whether it's explode, implode. I believe that we are not in control as much as we'd love to believe that oh my god i did this or i i am <laughs> but we're gods are we not we are gods but i also believe that we have there's a spiritual realm that is helping us all in our journeys i don't mm. think that 
I have the power to do what I've done with my life mm. uh, by myself. I don't think, well, this is just my belief. I know, well, I, I believe that I've had help, Yeah, you know? Um, I've got into lots of difficult situations where I'm just like, oh, my flip out. What, what the? And then it's just, it works out. I mean, every single day we wake up. How do we mm. know? You know? And how, how, do, how does everything play out? That's mm. not us, our planning. We didn't make the days. We didn't make the sun. We didn't yeah. make the moon. So whatever that thing that created everything, I know has got a game plan for me. And I'm learning to just chill. Like, I'm doing this meditation and today's centering thought was about the ability to be at ease, mm. knowing that things will take care of themselves. Let so I, I, yeah, just surrender, you know, yeah. things will, so whatever situation you're in, your only responsibility is to focus on the now. Mm. And when you focus on the now, you realize that the problems that you're worried about are tomorrow. Sure. So I can't, even if I don't have money for rent today on the 14th, mm. I can't worry about the 30th or the 31st because I'm not at the 31st. It's not here. It's, it's not so. Be present, be here. For my own peace of mind, I'm going to be on the 14th of December and go, yeah. thank you, I've got food and I've got a roof over my table head right now. And then on the 30th, whatever i'll deal with whatever the third year yeah. has got in store for me i've, I've heard a quote life. i've heard a quote that says you can never be fully happy until you can fully be in the present yeah and most of us i think Sadhguru says this we we suffer yeah um anxiety for the future and we suffer the pains of the past whereas if we were just here now we'd fully get to enjoy and understand life totally you are sangoma i am you know, I hate labels and titles and because I've always been a free spirit and I don't like to be bottled and boxed in anything. Mm. But I know that I'm spiritually gifted. Mm. Um, I know that I'm on my journey of refining my gifts. Mm. And I don't think that you can call yourself a guru or a isangoma or a healer unless you've put in at least like 30 years or something mm. in your healing journey. So of healing of, others of yourself, yourself. Okay. because you can't be a healer with a dirty vessel so first you've got to work yourself so do you these, believe that completely you can't I was, I was watching um wakanda forever black panther okay and look it's fictional of course but one of the characters says something like the best leaders or the greatest leaders are broken people broken people who have healed okay i don't think that you can be a leader while you're still broken okay so I think you do have to go through things so that we can also see your leadership. Okay, you have to burn in the fire. Okay, I hear you. But, but you, you must you have, have healed. You have to do your healing okay. work. Otherwise, it's like a bath. Imagine taking a, a bath in dirty water. I yeah. never be clean. So how are you going to be cleaning people's spirits if you yourself? So for me, I, take, I think it takes years and years and years. And I'll only be recognized as a healer, I think mm. maybe in my 60s or something, where everyone's like, okay, it's called Kunziki now. What, what do you feel of Vizango Mazamanji? You know, it's colorful space. I think it's important and good that black people are embracing the African spirituality. Yeah. Um, I think that's part of the liberation of the mind and what we've gone through as an oppressed people. Ne? Yeah. But I also think that there's always going to be the 10% of dodge element mm -hmm. in human beings, you know? Things are only ten percent. <laughs> hey, you're being generous. What a nice person. No, it's just that you know, or the eighty twenty rule that sure. also happens with human beings, where yeah. eighty percent of us will be pure, and the intention. Then you've got that twenty percent that's holding everybody back. Yeah. You know, so I do think that you have to choose your healers mm. in this time and space because even people with mental illnesses or people who are doing funny things mm. are hiding behind Bungoma. So I don't know. And I also think that we ourselves haven't taken ourselves seriously enough to be, have a board or an authority of traditional healers where mm. if you bring Bungoma into disrepute, you get actually um, held accountable for it. Isn't that the systems that you say are anti-nature? Maybe Zangoma were nature 
But now these people are coming with these weird things. Like, how do we clean them out? I think that's why that's probably why there isn't a system because of that. But it's but I think that yeah, you know, sometimes white people things <laughs> work. How the white <laughs> brain works? Yeah. Because what you find is that black people are very creative. So yeah. we live outside the box. We it's very easy for us to do and create. Yeah. And it's not easy for white people. White people, you need to give them the project mm. and then they'll do the and project instructions, methodologically, step by step, you yeah. know? Sometimes I wish that Africans also had that mythological element of, okay, guys, now we do this. Mm. But that's the thing. Everybody's different. That's how I'm saying that you, you get to a point where you realize that things are never going to be one way in this world. Maybe part of the reason we had to encounter white people was to learn some of their ways that can help us advance as a people. Not just white people, any kind of people. Yeah. Um, any kind of encounter with anybody who's not like you mm. uh, is going to teach you stuff. Mm. So even the Indians have got things to teach us. Even the Chinese have got things to teach us. Those you know? two groups have got a lot to teach us. Even they've got a lot to learn from us. 100%. You know. So that's why the dream of this Rainbow Nation, it's ideal, but it would be fantastic if it was a proper democracy where everybody's equal. Yeah. Right now, it's not equal. So Everyone is striving towards whiteness, to be honest, see, and a Western way of living. So if it wasn't, if we actually had a cosmopolitan thing, it would be beautiful mm. where you're seeing the array of cultures where we are not trying to be white, like mm. you say. What What is a mental illness? So you're saying some of these people today are hiding be behind Ubungoma and they have mm -hmm. mental illnesses. And I've joked to some of my friends about Izangoma mm -hmm. to say, but the idea of voices in your head, this thing of it changing your voice crazy. to Abelungu, to the Western way and medicine, they might define some of those things. No, Bipolar, but to them, some of their cultures are so weird. What yeah. is that stuff in Catholic churches where you're putting things and cross, cross? That's of also course. weird to yeah. us. You know what I'm saying? So what, when what, I speak about illness? when I speak about mental illness, I just mean that it goes back to our healing work again, yeah. where you haven't worked on a trauma, or there is a bipolar, or there is really a multiple personality disorder, or mm. you know. Um, but do you think those are to, real things, or they're just problems that you need to overcome? I think that human beings are varied and vast, mm. and there's no such thing as normal. Do you think there is such a thing as a mental illness or there's just a mental deviation from the average? Well, let's, okay, we can call it deviation. Yeah. We can call it deviation so that we're not saying, but some people are really hardcore deviants. <laughs> you know? Is it because they hurt other so, people or just because they're really different? No, just because they were born like that. Yeah. Just like some people were born with a penis and a vagina. Yeah. Or some, you know, things happen in this world where... Yeah. We're not all the same and we are having to learn that we are not all the same and we're having to learn to not shame each other or ridicule each other or think you're better than other people because you were born like this. Yeah. So that is part of the human evolution journey, isn't it? To be less judgmental and to be more accommodating of the different species of human mm. beings. I'm just, I'm just wondering, because I, I think about this quite a lot that what we call a mental illness is defined by mm. a people that came with a way of living, mm -hmm. which suits economy, industry. And if there isn't such, in our culture, really, there wasn't, because mm. we we kind of acknowledge that Abantu are Abantu. Mm. It's the same way how we didn't have genders. Uh, like Unkulungulu, Kama, Tautiko, wasn't gendered. Yeah. Who is not he or she. Yeah. So, I've heard that we don't have um, uh, gender pronouns in African yes, languages. Yes, 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 because we were very gender neutral. Mm. The whole patriarchal thing is anabelung, where now men are above, or women are the rib or whatever. That's yeah. all like Christianity hogwash. And you don't believe language. in patriarchy, matriarchy dynamics? Um, I There's believe There's people that, that argue that beings... Africa was matriarchal. Yes, matriarchal, I think that a lot of people misunderstand what matriarchal systems mean. Matriarchal systems mean that there was a king and a queen. Okay. So it's duality. Okay. Whereas patriarchal is about putting the man above the woman. Mm. So matriarchal systems mean that 
man and a woman so a king had to have a queen and mm. you know there was always that balance so we've lost a lot of that now obviously with the coming of 1652 mm. and the demasculating of our men they now had to express their power over us the black women mm. and that's what's led to the breakdown of communication and which is what we find ourselves in now mm. so um yeah in our culture women had a, a place we were equal mm. so i'm hoping we can get back to that balance because it's hard to pretend that you're less than what you are mm. especially to a uh, to spirits that are younger than you because spiritually women are older than men in what sense um we are the custodians of spirituality the fact that we can create life in our mm. bodies so that's why women were revered in in ancient african times because that was like wow quite a godly thing to do mm. for that process to happen inside of you so that's why i say that men are younger than us spiritually even the way things play out you can see mm. but men have also got their strengths men are strong much stronger than us like physically physically sure like some even some skinny guy can like you know you. lift me up and i'm just like what the hell this is some supernatural yeah you know so that's why we are having to have these conversations about male strength mm. and not abusing male strength against the woman because it actually does really exist yeah. and there's nothing that we can do about it there's nothing we can fight that's why we're getting into such heated a heated violent male and female fight that's going on at this time mm. because there are certain things that are just part of nature sure um but they're being abused and now it's creating all sorts of so that men's conference you guys keep talking about we're waiting <laughs> we've had it we just can't tell you about it ngobanzo mm -hmm. no, i'm kidding um we would know the minute there's a men's conference that has happened is it because me, is it because men snitch men don't know how no, to keep secrets it'll be in your behavior and how you treat us <laughs> we will know when you guys have had the men's conference Right now it's still just a mess but there's also a men and women's conference that needs to be had because women are also starting to abuse their power of their spiritual power and yeah. women can ma manipulate like not they can they do on a daily are, that's basis that's our talent <laughs> so hmm. <laughs> getting to a place where each gender doesn't abuse their superpower yeah that would be stunning if we start having conversations around mm. okay how do we because i know you also hate women <laughs> hate women i love women i love no i'm kidding why would you say that no i'm joking i'm talking about you like you were talking about women and baby mamas and the yeah. whole thing with the parents the primary caregiver and sure. the court systems that conversation yeah um i mean there's a conversation that needs to be had around baby mamas and baby daddies yeah. right about the child raising and who has more rights and you know yeah. um because there's a very there's a big pain for men in that area there's big pain for men and women in the rape convers in the sexual assault conversation mm. um there's big pain for men in the men are the providers conversation i agree the the dynamics are quickly changing. It's very oppressive to men and we're not even talking about it. You see, so yeah. there are big conversations and how do we deal with now women being more financially empowered mm. and st women still expecting to be provided for. Mm. You know, and how do we deal with even the issue of women who are providing who are still expected to be domesticated in the house? Yes. So there are all these conversations that we are needing to have but we're skitting around and nobody wants to have them and people are fighting but we actually like how we have church mm. we need to have workshops as a society to come mm. and try find it because our units as black people especially were broken by oppression and apartheid yeah so we are living we're coming from broken families how do we bring our families back together mm. why have men left the homes why are women raising children alone mm. So these are important conversations that we're not having that we should be. Who do you think is meant to be driving these conversations number 1 and number 2? It sounds in what you're saying like you believe in firm sexes or genders. 
you mentioned we're born a certain way. You mentioned no, men and women have various superiorities given by nature. Okay. So I wanted to ask if you have any opinions on the movements that are happening now with people changing. No. Their I also know. I also said that human beings are very, very, yeah. and I said that people are born with vaginas and penises. So we need to have the conversation. Maybe what I'm hearing you say that we need to have a conversation around gender roles. Can um, I speak about gender quickly? So this is my understanding, uh -huh. and you can share yours. It took me a while to get to this point where I now separate gender and biology or sex. Yes. Your biology and sex is your private parts yeah. that were given, your hormones yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, the hormones one is debatable because some people with penises yeah, have, well, you know. Estrogen and yeah, the other way around. Which becomes complicated. Then there comes gender now with gender roles of if you have a penis, if you have high testosterone, you must go work in the field. You must go yeah. lift the heavy things. Yeah. Um, you must go fight yeah. in the war. If you which is what we're trying to move the, away from, I guess. That, that's what I wanted to ask. Yeah. So if you have a vagina and breasts, you, you are the better be the nurturer, etc. No. So, uh -uh. so with the with the gender biology sex discussion, and what I'm trying to ask, I think, from you is, when you speak gender roles, the gender roles, I think, we can discuss. I think I wanted to ask more about the biology sex of, do you believe penis, vagina, and that's it for you, or are you saying there are people that are not like that just naturally? And we must understand. No, there them. are people who are just like that, not like that naturally. I mean, for the longest, for many years, people thought I was lesbian because I've got such a strong masculine energy. Yeah. So I don't think there is a set thing. Mm. That's why it's so da dangerous <laughs> to be heterosexual because you can be, because the world is created and TV and media, you only see men and women in those certain gender roles. There isn't enough. Um, content on mm. the lgbtqi community it's not equalized mm. so we get socialized to be girls who put on makeup who do our nails and mm. boys get socialized to buy golf seven and to drink hennessy and then we drink the champagne you know mm. so i think that's all socialization it is and like i say i think that we are just striving to create well, for me, in my little world, I want mm. to strive to create a world where everybody just can show up as themselves and be respected and be mm. equal. And there's no hierarchies at all. And and it just doesn't matter. Things like that don't matter. Mm. So you're saying we're socialized and part of the concern of the heterosexuals who are anti any progressive movement, their arguments are if we allow for more LGBTQI plus content, it might say, um, socialize a traditionally, naturally penis, high testosterone person to experiment in something they're not. Is part of their concern with the socialization of mm. kids are kids, they copy what they see, girls want to wear pink, get do makeup, but now if you expose them to, you can drive a mm -hmm. tractor and watch what you might experiment. I think experiment. You're, born, you're born a certain way. Mm. Because what about the kids who were gay but went to live in this heterosexual world? Yeah. They came out gay anyways. Yeah. So but I they had to that, fight. But Which the is point part of is the fight. They shouldn't from, have to fight. Yeah, they shouldn't have to fight. And yeah. they should be represented in the yeah. media. If we are the people we think we are, we say we are, the people mm. who are loving and democratic mm. and good people, yeah. good people allow for other people to be themselves and to be to express themselves as fully as they want. Yeah. So if you're going to be this godly person, it means that you're going to have to accept people who are not like you. Where do we draw the line? Where people get hurt. So if you, what you believe in doesn't harm me, yeah. then it's none of my business. You can continue. I normally make an example that gets people very emotional and very angry. So in one dynamic of the world, killing makes sense where if someone has murdered, raped a community, nature might say, let's put mm -hmm. this person down. They are danger mm -hmm. to us. That's why we've had death penalties and, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and some people understand. And some people are like, but that's wrong. Mm -hmm. This person has rights, etc. From a sexuality spectrum, there is a group in North America. <laughs> I think it's called um, Men Loving Boys, something along those lines. It's pedophilic, you know, mm -hmm. legally. Um, 
And part of their argument, and I, I went to go and look up the definition of pedophilia, and I, I think the legal definition is it's children under 12, which is very young. Because some of us see like a 16-year-old so girl. is that not like harmful that. to the child, though? So, so uh, the reason I'm asking you, and look, mm -hmm. like I said, I, it's a very sensitive, controversial, mm -hmm. it's not like I even have a side. It's just mm -hmm. a 20-year-old man will want to be intimate with a 12-year-old boy which society says is disgusting, it's wrong, you're violating a child, they haven't matured, et cetera. And they're saying, we're not hurting anyone. This 12 year old loves me. That's why I'm asking, cause again, from the no. phobic people, okay. they feel like certain lines have been crossed. They argue things like, I have a penis, you have a vagina. Why are you with your vagina looking for another? It's wrong, you know? Again, even this age of consent 16, to be honest, it's airy fairy. We don't know if girls, boys are mature enough at 16 or even at 20. Someone might be mature at 14. Someone might be immature at 35. And the 14 year old might be abusing the 35 year old because of. So the question is just where do we draw the line and who decides? So um, I'm sure if you had conversations with these little children, they themselves would also say they don't like it when uncle touches them. So like I said, when you start harming people, yeah. that's where you draw the line. That is harmful to children. That is an abuse of power by a grown up. Mm. When people are the same age and experimenting the same things, that's something else. Mm. But once you are in a position of power, whether it's age or economic power, whatever kind of power, mm. there's a problem. Mm. If somebody can't speak for themselves, there's a problem. Mm. That's why we have this constant conversation. Mm. Which you've got to have an explicit, yes, I want to do this. It mustn't be like, mm, mm, uh. who, who decides? It can't be the grown up because the grown up has got power over the child. Mm. Therefore, the child is not deciding. So that's not consent. Mm. Who, who decides the line? Because you're saying, look, the child is being hurt. And I'm saying, who decides? Is it, is it you so, as an average citizen? Is it the courts? Is it a king? Let's say, is it the church? I mean, even the size of a grown up mm. is different to the size of a child. So I, whatever hear, penetration hearing, is I'm happening, your, there is going to be blood. It's, going, it's not going I'm, to be a I'm nice hearing your argument as an individual. I'm asking from a society perspective. Mm, who's making all answering. these? Because the 16, the 21s, we didn't decide them. They were told to us, you are now an adult. But I need to society gets together and says, like the constitution doesn't come out of no, it's human beings that come with the rules. Mm. So as part of the rules, we're saying, no, grown ups can't be having sex with children mm. because children don't are not in a position of power. Who's we? Society. We had apartheid laws. We've got laws even today that, okay. that oppress society and they weren't decided by us but we've got laws that work for us and mm. laws yes that don't work for us but we've got laws i need mm. so we're saying that we need laws i'm asking who who makes them in 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 circumstances where social issues that affect us whether we should kill people or not if they do things wrong do you mean who makes them as in in parliament um i think i'm asking you who do you think should be because I think it's tied to we a question society, I asked. Because that's how bills are passed. I need a certain. You're happy group with the decision makers, is like, No, obviously, I'm not happy with them. Mm. But um, when you build a community or society mm. or a family, there's rules. Mm. In any unit, there's rules. Mm. So we cannot justify having adults sleeping with children mm. at all and we can't be having this conversation it's it's sad that mm. we have to explain to grown-ups that they can't have sex with children we need to have the conversations um it's it's sad that men or men and women are in that state of mind where they mm. want to have sex with children so uh, one of the questions i asked you i think we we're speaking about ubungo we will speak about the conversations we need to have as men and women, the men's conference, women's conference, the men and women's conference. And I was asking who are the people that are meant to be responsible to drive those things? I think it's in the same space because if politicians are not doing it, if the religious leaders, the business leaders, 
if even some of the traditional leaders are not doing it, who's going to do it? Because again, in this very controversial topic, someone decides, some big celebrity somewhere, or the United Nations, they sit and they decide, oh, we've now legalized this. We're going to add it to LGBTQI and we, there's an uproar and we fight. And then the argument is like, but where were you guys? Why did you not have the conversations before Amapunu decided to make apartheid a law? So I'm asking who are, who's meant to guide the men's conference, the women's that, conference, and the and the conversations that we as a society need to have to move we forward. We used to have Africans used to have systems where we talk amongst ourselves. Mm. Like that's what the crowd represented in the family home. It's about that African justice system where we unpack Uti, okay, this one so they can't go to any of the village um rituals like celebration rituals for the next three years sure. so we as umpagati are supposed to be actively involved in the laws and yeah. how we run ourselves how do we get that right because you can see society copies mm -hmm. what they see on tv and what they hear from politicians the thing is that until black people are in that space where we take ourselves seriously mm. At the moment, I don't know if it's the trauma from our oppression or whatever, but especially black South Africans, we're not in a good space. We're not really in a good space. Are you not so, one of the people that is meant to drive it, this? When I, not, when I ask who's meant to be responsible, who's meant to be drawing the lines, can it not be you? It can't be one person. Because but you there's, have there's, seen the light. No, but there's how many? 50 million South Africans. 60 million. Yeah, well. So we can't make it about one person. That's why it's going to... Africans used to have communal systems. We they don't have them, them anymore. That's the thing. But I'm saying you can go and get them it's going again. It's about us, yes. But, but you have to drive us. it. It's an us. It's not me. It's an us. Because some people don't... Yes. So we have to be conscious of that. So that's what's going to be a collective of minds of an us. What if the collective never comes? Then we're going to be as screwed as we are right now. Because you don't want to lead. No, it's not that I don't want to lead. I, no. I, there's so many dynamics. South Africans, first of all, don't like strong women. Mm. So I'm going to have to be jumping and doing hula hoops and whatever and somersaults just to get one thing moving. Mm. That's what I'm saying. That it's, Can I be in a group where whoever's fans yeah, can pretend that they're following them but I'll be in the back there saying, okay, and so on and so. Mm. But I know that South Africans are not ready for feminine, a female leader. That's why it's taken them for so long, even now. <laughs> they, they watch me in secret. <laughs> how how, do, how do you feel secret. about the people that truly admire and follow you? Because you have a lot. There's a lot of... Mm. young men and women, old men and women that genuinely mm. follow you and inspired by you. They may not say it the way, yeah. but how do you feel about that? And what responsibility do you feel to them? Yeah. Um, and well, when I do the things that I do or say the things I do, I know that they exist. Mm. And they are the ones that carry me when the backlash is happening because it's them who come to my DMs. Yeah. And, you know they find ways to cushion what I go through. Mm. So I'm thankful for those people. Mm. Um, I do feel like I, I am doing everything that I can and doing my level best to push the messages I'm supposed to be pushing mm. um, and doing the work I'm supposed to be doing. I do feel like I, if anything, I get frustrated because I feel like it's not acknowledged or it's not, it's, the most thankless job I've ever had. <laughs> do, do people consult with you? Um, or are you open for consultations? I've always been open. Like, my people come to my DMs. People, my DM people know this. Mm. Um, even for different things, you know? Mm. Um, Physically? Coming to your home, bringing something? Bonga. Yes, I'm about to get into that level. See, that's yeah, why I was saying that yet. it's easy. I, it, I'm easing myself into this gift. <laughs> okay. But um, yes, I need to now. You're almost ready. I'm almost ready for my Ndumba, yes.
Part of your gifts include beadwork, making music, doing poetry. How's that going? It's beautiful. Mm. It's how I live. My beadwork is the most underrated, most incredible thing that ever happened to me in my whole entire life. Um, it's the reason that I haven't lost myself. It's the reason I'm grounded. It's the reason I exist. It's my breathing. Um, but it, people don't realize that it's the gift that's in the forefront. But because it's so chilled, you know, you know when something is just is. There's no needing to prove itself, whatever. So it's been there since I was like 20. Yeah, 20. I'm 42 now. So I've always been beating all along. Um, there was a time that I had stopped for a little bit because I was getting caught up in the whole music and the glam and the whatever. Mm. And literally my life got so messy and congested and I lost everything. And like, you know, I was like, where did I lose everything? Where did I fall? And I realized I fell when I stopped doing the beadwork. So the beadwork is part of, I can't, that is something I'm not allowed to not do. So I do the beadwork and I've got my private clients. Right now I'm doing a piece for Psyche that has been so difficult for some reason. Um, but each piece has its own journey with me and mm. It's a very beautiful journey, very spiritual, very... It's how I connect to the other side. So that's beautiful. The poetry and the music is for the side of me that's extroverted because I'm very quiet, dual. I'm very uh, in and oh, I'm. <laughs> Yeah. So when I'm... That's the stage and the music and... Because I've got a lot of energy as well. Mm. I've got excess energy. So I know that it can be used on stage and it can be used to influence and have a good time. Yeah. Especially when I'm an MC, I love my MC gigs. <laughs> I'm just like, yo guys, this is my element. Guys, let's go, come with me. And then they're like, yeah, yeah, we're coming, we're coming. <laughs> so, you know, it's very nice. I've got a very nice energy that I know how to play with and to work with and to work people with. Uh, so by the end of the event, it was just like, oh, I'm Siki. You know, they feel like I'm their sister or yeah. the, so, I enjoy that. I enjoy that. Then, then there's also, like I say, the beadwork, which is more inward, where I turn everybody off now, and then it's just about inside cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. And then obviously I go again with the music and the stage, and I go out and express it, then I come back. And, so it's a cycle of that. Your, your beading is your breathing. It's my is breathing. what you said. My beading is my breathing. That's beautiful. A lot of people have looked at your sister, King Ta, Tandi Swamazwai, and they've looked at you mm. and they've made a contrast with Beyonce Knowles and Solange. Yes. I wanted to ask if you have anything to say, maybe not about you and your sister, but maybe the analogy of how you feel about a Solange. It was so hilarious that because, because you know how South Africans are ignorant. <laughs> so initially, this is many years ago, there was Beyonce. Yeah. Then there was Solange that which she hadn't before she released. There was yeah. this Solange random. So they'd be laughing at me. They're like, yeah, I guess Solange. Oh, Solange was white. Qua, 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 Solange was white. And they thought they were dissing me. Right? <laughs> but because I read and I was like, Solange is actually the dope one. I was mm. like, okay, you guys don't realize you're telling me I'm the dope one. But anyways, yeah. then Solange goes boom. Then they're all like, yo, Solange. And now they stop calling me Solange my wife because they realize Solange is dope. Jeez. <laughs> so it's been really hilarious. It's been interesting to live in a society that tries to erase me. Yeah. Um, By making you someone's sister. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And trying to pretend as if I'm not as great as yeah. I think I am. Or And what's fascinating about it is that just with the two personalities, with me and my big sister, mm. I've got a bigger personality than my big sister. She's sure. more quiet than me. So it's always been a stupid comparison because mm. um, she draws strength from me. Mm. So for people to make that comparison, I was just like, oh my God, guys, you're actually... Do you think there's something wrong that society is not getting? You know, so Utandi so could have been your mom. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, you're living in your mother's shadow. And, and you're like, yeah. 
I'm an extension of my mother. So my sister is just another me. She's my sister. Where, where do you think we maybe could have gotten it wrong? This thing of almost wanting to get siblings, parents and kids to almost think, compete. You know what? I think it does have a lot to do with the fact that I'm confident and comfortable in my skin. Yeah. Because they didn't do that with Louisa and Zwei. Or they don't do that with... You know, there's lots of siblings in the okay. industry. I think because... I'm such a big and I'm the son and we, there's an envy thing that us black people have <laughs> who is just like how dare you be privileged how dare you be rich how dare you be talented how mm. dare you know so that is irritating and I, I think I irritate people because I'm turned to a sister because they also want to be turned to a sister <laughs> 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 so I don't know it's just, I, I've learned to I mean in the past I used to be like oh no but I'm also like now I'm just like yo <sighs> listen guys listen they think that I draw for my sister they think mm. she draws for me there is no <laughs> this is life this is life there's no better than you know it, this is it's like your own real life mm. you know there's no one better than you or less than you everybody's hustling on their own thing Everybody's uniquely gifted. Everybody has got their own place. But I do enjoy being her sister. It's gotten me into some rooms. Yes, man. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. Thank you very Thank much. You, Tandy, so <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I'm thinking of the Ranakas now and how they've built an amazing reality show. Yeah. Would you guys ever consider something like that, number one? And even, <sighs> I'm even thinking about my own siblings. Yeah. I'll speak for myself without yeah. using it as an example. Why we, I don't know if struggle is the right word, why we end up working with so many strangers instead of working with the talent at yeah. home. What I think about the Renakas, um, it's easier because only Janelle was crazy there. <laughs> with us. <laughs> no one can understand. It's a full man house. <laughs> There's a problem. You know, it's just going to be... Yo, unearthing all our family problems, it's just going to be too much. It's too much. It's going to be 500 million. Would you guys be thing. fine, though, sharing personal parts of your lives? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, we've had some difficult, difficult. Yeah. So I don't think we want to expose. Keeping some, up with the Mazwais. Mm -mm, the things that we don't want to expose. You've got one brother. Two. Two brothers. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, please, if you may share about your brothers. I know, you know, I always, I always, I'm always like, why shine. can't they, people interview all of us? I'm yeah. always like, please invite me with all my siblings. The two boys are at the bottom. Yeah. So, yeah, so they've got these big, amazing, fabulous sisters. And uh, or, so, or so you say. Yeah, we are. We I are, think those sisters are. have got two amazing younger <laughs> yeah. brothers. No, we do. Sure. No, we do. Sure. Like, you must see me when I'm with my little brothers. Mm. And then you just know with our bus funny plus. Bus funny. <laughs> I, I, my walk changes every because I'm just like complete gentleman, very mm. loving, and I love my brothers. They just really. How old really, are they? What do they do? My bro my one brother's 30, and the other one is 24 yeah. or 25. Um, the 30 year old he's in like capital investment stuff he's serious he's a good black yeah a good Probably. black going he's to make very, money very good black not going to be a loser <laughs> like my sisters and going to entertainment exactly mm. no that's why we're always like oh Asa bless you bless you she saw one. she was like it's flames there you took one there. for the team man it's flames there it's a no for me he took one for the team so even now, always we put put him in our prayers all the time to be like, please can also make a lot of money, please. Because <laughs> la, I'm gonna have to go my stuff. <laughs> you know. Then this Langa Langa is still finding himself, but he's very philosophical, mm. and he's a great writer, very gentle spirit. He's he's kind of like you, a man who can be with women. gentle spirits. I'm a gentle spirit. You're, You're a gentle right. spirit, yeah. Like those men who can be with women, who know how yeah. to talk to women. So he's like that. Like when I'm going crazy and there's beef and whatever, Langa's the one who I can talk to and go back and forth. Because, you know, when you're heated, it's hard to to speak yeah. or to find. A, but he is that. He's such a gentleman. I worry about him, about the girls, though, because, yo, he's quite a cutie. 
So it's life. Look, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we live with like, it. I'm like, yo, my brother's in danger. These little bitches. Oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> the other day, I went partying with them. And it's because I wasn't actually all together there, but I do remember he had two women with him. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing with two girls? <laughs> like, and he calls himself the Mazwai Mafia. He's yes, like, man. yeah, I'm the, <laughs> I don't know what it is. He's got some mafia name. Yeah. The Maz or the Messiah. The Messiah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you know, we, we always hear these stories of uh, <laughs> young girls and their older brothers. Ooh, I'm gonna meet his older brothers. I wonder if your your brothers have a similar when with they're the, with girls. Which oof, I'm scared to meet your older I sisters. I think they're scared. Yes, hectic. Scared. We did meet one girl though, but she was very strict. I could see that my brother was not gonna go there. Jeez. She was just like you know, but it's very beautiful. It's yeah. very beautiful, but it's also very volatile. It's very volatile. It mm. can ingasu ganje. That's what I like about having siblings is that. If I'm fighting with this one, then I can just go to the other one. Of course. And then when this is done, that's what's nice. Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about I that. I know. I'm yeah. always like, guys. Having siblings is, you have therapists, sure. partners in crime, people that can fund you Shh. when you Dude. sing flames, people that can people call you to order. mirror you and people that make you like my little sister. Oh my God, my sister's. It's, I always feel like this is a punishment for every all my sins. I've got my little sister to deal with. Yeah. Where she's just like, I'm not scared of you for shit. Boom. And Who the fuck do you think what? I am? And I'm just not like, one of your groupies. Come I'm, on. I'm your big sister. How dare you? What? You must respect me. So your siblings will teach you. Mm. Your siblings will teach you. And some of them have your buttons. They've got them on speed down. You? On speed dial, she'll just be saying one word. Mm. It's just like so. That's why I say it's volatile. You know, that's why I hate it when people, in, especially in public, mm. when I meet them for the first time and they refer to my siblings, because I'm like, you don't know what time it is. Yeah. Don't ask me about my siblings. I don't know you, yes. and I don't want you to throw me into my family stuff. I'm here in the streets. I'm trying to. Don't ask me about those bitches. I'm not talking <laughs> to them today. <laughs> Sure. So um, that is something that really it really annoys me, and I know people think that it's a stupid thing, but mm. it's very invasive to have people come into your because my family, mm. even though my sisters are famous, it's still my family, it's still my private space, mm. and I'm very sacred about my private life. Mm. That's why you've never read about me anything. Sure. Mm. I'm very like so. The minute somebody oversteps that boundary that I don't know, because I'm just like, yeah, I I get you, I appreciate that you appreciate my work, but mm -hmm. don't ask me about my sisters because I don't know you. Sure. So what do you? Yeah. Oh, all right. Bye, bye, Takaya. Yes. Hmm. Hi. Last big best no. And I'm like, no, but I don't know you like sure. that. I don't sure. know you. You're a person I'm meeting in the shops, who's saying hi, and now you're going into my family life, and I'm just like, <gasps> I will. Oh. Mm. You know, so I just wish people had a little bit more timing. You know, don't ask me about my siblings. Don't ask me about my family. You don't know. We could be fighting. Don't ask. What are your views on the newspapers that keep writing about you? Um, let's say, for example, yeah. some of those journalists were to watch this and this is your chance to actually speak to them and tell them, guys, I know you write about me, but please consider this. I don't even think they care. Yeah, but Kaza. I live in a country, I think I said this earlier in the interview, where society has made it okay to disrespect me. Mm. They just find like, I'm this thing that people can kick around and it's normal. Your name and is Strong. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just, people are all very familiar with my name. And that my, doesn't hurt my you? Delela, I've had to not, I've had to distance myself from it. Mm. So when people are acting a clown with you just move away because then they left with it and mm. and they'll be left with being groupies. Mm. Would you prefer if they were to try and do better? I would much be prefer. Ask me, ask me questions. Ask me, what did you mean when you tweeted this? Don't yeah. go and assume and then project your own stuff on there and then ruin my reputation because of your issues with me. Sure. Ask me. So yeah i mean it's getting better now because i think mm. they've realized that they're not going to be able to kill me yeah they realize people have yeah. realized and i think yeah. you know the weird thing about life this happened to trump i think putin there are people that are haters 
But when they realize that you're consistent, that you're strong, yeah. that you can shrug stuff off, some of them end up becoming your biggest yes. friends. Yes. They're like, I used to troll this lady and yes. the way she took heat and the way she's yes. so strong. Yes. I wouldn't be able to do yes. it. So saying I'm sure Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I think we are we finally reached that level now. <laughs> your your view so. on the development and the progress of let's be specific to black South African women mm. from maybe when you were young to what you're seeing now. Do you see progress? Do you see regress? We've I got slave definitely queens and... see progress. Yeah. I see progress. I see women more able to use their voices. I see more professional women. Mm. Like I see a lot of women. Yo, the reason women hate each other is because we're so intimidating. Yeah. Because you walk into a room and they are just like, whoa. Then you're just like, wow, where do I fit in here? Look, she's so amazing. She's so amazing. So women are being amazing. Yeah. Women are being amazing. Women are even doing the stuff where they do the spiritual work. Like if you go to spiritual gatherings, it's women there, mm. you know? So if anything, I just feel as if it's men that need to now step up. We've mm. done that thing where we focus on the girl child. Sure. So now the boys and the big brothers, mm. it's time for you to step in and be like, no, this is how we roll. Because we want we want to see men stepping up. Yeah. It's very sexy. When you see the man doing that man thing. Come on. We're just like, woo. Doing that penalty <laughs> thing. Yeah, you're just like, oh my God. I'll, I'll, I'll give you my vagina. Sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's how women think. No, you're like, right. Yeah, you're just like, yeah, that's how Why are my legs that's opening? <laughs> What's happening? Jeez. That's how I was saying to somebody the other day, I was like, we don't look at looks. Yeah. I was like, women, I was like, that's a luxury for men. Men can look for women for looks. Yeah. We don't look for looks. We are looking for who's going to be the man. We look at the action. Step up. Nick. Who's going to be a man? Who's going to man up next to Nziki Mazwai? Who's mm. going to be a man? Yes, yes. I don't look for looks. Like, who shot I don't think I ever will. I, I don't think I'm interested in... But you must find that man that's going to step up and you dominate you and tame think, you. No, I think that I might be those women that has to have a few husbands. I will. I do. I do. <laughs> I've thought about it because... I'm always like, forever, forever, ever, forever, ever, ever, <laughs> with one person. Jeez. And it's like, it's too much information for me. That I'm, I'm, just I'm, like, I'm just like, you know what? If we can just be all at peace, I'm okay with open relationships, guys. Mm. And um, Oh, is this an announcement? I'm just, saying, must... I'm just saying, I'm just saying, because the thing is that, thank you, there's different needs. People feel, because. Thanks, Q fill different needs so you'll you'll find that the guy who's rich is emotionally unavailable yeah or the guy who has good pipe Hi, boo. has am oh, i allowed to golf say seven, that sorry. yeah yeah talk about the golf seven i thought you were talking yes, about something else yes 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 definitely when he's got a good seven. exhaust when you've got a good on. exhaust pipe then you don't have money so the men are never like you know straight cut so you have to get your ass here, you must get your cash here, you must get your, you know? But this sounds like um, <laughs> defending up fair, Because you know, there are guys that argue the same when they have multiple women. The thing is that, this is another conversation we need to have, right? Yeah. About mon monogamy, because monogamy came mm. when we tell the truth. You know, there's villages in Africa where a woman will put like, a tie on her door to be like, oh, I'm with this guy. When the other guy comes and sees that thing on the door, you know, it's going, oh, she's busy with the other guy. Yes, then yes. he goes off. And it's just normal. And it's just like, no, it's this person's chance today. Mm. We must share. Sharing is caring. Do you think that's nature? Who or, said, or do you think, who do you said, think it's, it's a, it's you know, a this niche? Is a, it's a good conversation to have because there's also STDs to think about. Unfortunately. Because for me, I'm hey, like, my STIs, no, yo, kulela, oh, oh, party, oh, oh. I'm always like, damn, if there were no STIs, man, man, man. Yes, this place would, be a good place. Pipe. would be a good place to live, man. So disgusting. <laughs> so, disgusting. so the fact that there's sexually transmitted infections mean that having multiple partners is not a good thing. Mm. That's what it means. Soul ties? So even soul ties, you mm. know, I don't. 
I don't like to have multiple. I mean, I got a, sometimes my whole side will fucking take over me and take over my body and spread. I'm just like, what the fuck was? What happened, Ziggy? But generally, mm. the eighty percent, I'm actually very behaved, mm. very, and I'm just like, no, uh, uh-uh. I need to know whatever. But it's a, there is a twenty percent sometimes where it's just like, whoa, whoopsie daisy. Jeez, what's happening? Whoa, I found the penis. Ay, Shit, bo. my bad. Okay, let's start again. Unbelievable. <laughs> Kushan, no more camera. Ay, what's happening? <laughs> So, I mean, but nobody... but do, do you think this is niche? This concept of number one being so dynamically needy, because I'll call it that. Some people sacrifice. She may not be a good cook. She may not be good in bed, but she ticks seven out of the ten yeah, boxes fine. And, and Some people are like, that. I'm very dynamically needy. I need to have at yeah, least well, two, I'm so three hungry. women. Please, can we order food also? Huh? I'm starving. Sorry. I'm I was I'm Yeah, I'm artist in fact. So now as it asked me because I'm just like yo. Anyways, we'll go. discuss the monogamy Anyways, and polygamy. Yes, another monogamy, day. but still. Let's shut it down and go get food. No, we don't need to shut it down. I was just letting you know. No, that's that fine. Women, the women, I think the women I, want, eat. I want to leave the audience hungry as well for the next okay, conversation. Okay, fine. I'm fine so. with that. I'm fine to discuss next time we're discussing polygamy we'll and We'll start monogamy. with polygamy, monogamy. Polygyny, polyandry, yeah, open relationships. Yeah, because I'm not ready polyamory. to express my views. I feel like your audience is going to judge me, so I need to ease them into what I'm really They want to judge you more than they've judged you already. <laughs> Ooh, Shane, there's levels. There's more. Away. There's more to judge. <laughs> Ziggy Mazwai, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you so much for having I've me. I've enjoyed the conversation. I know the energy got a bit funky there when we were discussing uh, pedophiles. Let me actually just state it like that. Um, but I do believe a lot of these conversations especially when they're uncomfortable they're important are the ones we need to have because if yeah. we don't the wrong people have them mm-hmm. on our behalf and will suffer and there'll be no guidance there won't be the yeah. right narrative you know because people are sheep true so you need to give them the narrative and it has to be the right one they're Otherwise, waiting for you to lead Jabu Kuluma your collective <laughs> thank you so <laughs> much <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs>